today we're going to be replacing the thermal compound on my Sager NP8258 gaming laptop on the processor, the i7-4710MQ. Whoops. You can cut that out. Yep. Today I'm using 70% uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I tend to prefer lower alcohol, alcohol contents because I find that it works better and it has a smaller chance of leaving behind any residue or anything from the alcohol. Of course, just some generic cotton balls for wiping off the old thermal compound. And I've got a set of jeweler's screwdrivers because I find they work best on the different sized laptop screws that are on this unit. And for the thermal compound, I have some Arctic MX4 ceramic thermal paste. I like to use this in laptops because it doesn't have any metal content, so it will not cause any damage if it lands on the motherboard inside the laptop by accident. In real life. They were removing the old thermal paste off of a Sager NP8258's processor, which is an i7-4710. I believe MQ and just remove the bracket here. I pre-removed the back plate though because it has a lot of screws and it's kind of a pain to remove. The screws here though are easy to remove. You just remove them, they won't come off because they are spring loaded so they're actually attached to this copper heat sink here. It's out. Just make sure these are all out. And this part here will just completely come up and off, and then you get this piece here. Take some rubbing alcohol and put it on a cotton ball and rub off the old thermal paste off of the heat sink apparatus here. you don't get any little bits of the cotton ball on the heat sink because they could catch fire. So as you can see, remove most of it. Set that down for a minute. Now comes removing the excess stuff that's already on the top of the processor die itself. It's okay if a little bit gets down along the side of the die, it will not harm the processor because this is ceramic thermal paste that's already on here. So, going to go with that. Then, some Arctic Silver, not Arctic Silver, Arctic MX4 ceramic thermal compound. I'm going to put a little bit of this on here. I don't use the metallic thermal compounds in laptops because it can fall off the die and land on the board and it'll basically zap and ruin stuff from the metal content. Give me a second. Cap was kind of stuck on there. Don't want to put too much of this. I prefer if I have something to um, spread it around on the die so going to just use a piece of rather thick paper that I have here, printer paper, to kind of spread it around. So put a, about a grain of rice size drop of this in the middle. Try not to get it everywhere. And then just, I like to spread it a tiny bit on the die itself, a little bit around. Kind of cover up most of the top of the die without making it too thick in any one area. There we go. The rest of the work will be done by the heat sink itself. I think that's pretty okay. Should be enough, but I'm going to add a little bit more to the edge just to be sure that this is enough. Smoothing it out.
so I'll put the heat sink back in its brackets and the pressure will kind of help to distribute the thermal compound better once it's reattached. Just put down the spring-loaded um, screws again until they are fully tight. Make sure they are not loose because it will sort of mess with um, thermal compound. That should be good now. It's fully tightened. And as far as the GPU, I don't think we're going to thermal paste it to take this in. Be careful because there's these little latch clips along here, so you sort of have to slide this until it's flush and make sure there's no gaps like so. And then you have the screws that go into the holes on the top here, and you just put about, I believe, about four of them back, two on the top and two along the fan vents in the back. I'm using a set of jewelers screwdrivers as you guys can see they I find they work the best for these little screws. Have to raise the laptop on end like this to put the additional last two screws into the holes on the heat sink fan ports which are on the back of this laptop. Take the final screw and tighten it in and sorry about that. Bug no top. So take the battery now because I'm fully complete. And the battery is a single unit, so it just slides in and locks in like that. And there we go. 